The IKEA Symphonics picture frame is the latest collaboration between Sonos and IKEA. Now this may just look like a picture frame, but it's actually a speaker disguised as a picture that you'd put on a wall. But I'm sure all of you want to know, can it actually compare to the Sonos One speaker? Well, let's find out. Hello, hello everyone, Jonah Mathis here. Before we get into this, if you could just take 1.2 seconds to click that like button, it would mean the world to me. So let's get right into it. The Symphonics picture frame costs 199 US dollars. That's the exact same price as the Sonos One speaker. It actually sounds very similar to the Sonos One as well. I did a lot of audio tests and comparisons with this speaker, so stay tuned for those, or you can just use the video chapters to skip there if that's what you're mainly interested in. Before we get into the different audio tests and my opinions on sound quality, let's talk about what comes in the box, the overall design, and the different features that it offers. So in the box, you get the picture frame speaker itself, a white power cable, a wall mounting bracket, two rubber feet, and a strap to secure the speaker to the wall if you choose to have it leaning against it. The wall mounting bracket is actually very simple and easy to use. Just use two screws to attach the bracket to the wall, making sure that it's level, of course. Then the picture frame just slides on top of it, and you can mount the picture frame either vertically or horizontally, whichever looks more aesthetically pleasing for your room. Then with the rubber feet, you can place the picture frame on the ground and lean it up against the wall. The strap is used to secure the frame to the wall so it can't just fall over and hit the ground. The Symphonics picture frame comes in both black and white. Thinking back on my purchase, I probably should have gone with a black and white one so I could show off the two designs, but it's a little too late for that now. The entire picture frame is made almost entirely out of plastic, with the covered panel being made out of plastic and covered with a polyester fabric. And the front can actually pop off, so you can change out the picture design if you want to. Underneath the frame, you'll find the different speaker drivers and a port. It looks like there's a 3-inch mid-range driver, a 1-inch tweeter, and the port. This port allows for the speaker to have better bass response, because while the speaker drivers are firing outward, there's still air moving underneath them. So this port allows for the air to escape, which in turn produces additional audio, typically improving the lower end frequencies though. I'll talk more about that later. Unfortunately, as of right now, there's only a few additional panel designs available from Ikea at $20 each. If the product is popular enough, I'm sure there will be more in the future, or even third party options elsewhere. I'd love to be able to print out my own design or picture and use it on this speaker, but I really don't foresee Ikea offering this as an option. You'd likely have to do it yourself or get it from somewhere else, and just good luck with that for right now. I won't be attempting it, that's for sure. So on the back of the left side of the frame, you'll find three buttons, play slash pause, volume up, and volume down. There are three different connections available on the back side as well. Power in, which is required for the speaker to actually work, ethernet in, and power out. Yes, you heard that right, there's a power out. So you can daisy chain up to two picture frames together while only using a single outlet. I'm not entirely sure how you'll be able to hide the daisy chain cable though. Seems slightly more difficult than just cutting a small hole in the wall and dropping the cable down to hide it. Anyways, if you want to daisy chain, you'll need to purchase a separate cable from Ikea called the Fornima, but it looks like it's not even available in the United States, which is weird. I did find an alternative on Amazon that should work perfectly fine though. When mounted on the wall, the picture frame does hang out quite a bit. It's not nearly as low profile as a regular picture frame, but I still think it looks very nice. And if you'd like to hide the cable, you can easily do so by again cutting a small hole behind where the connections are located, you can just drop the cable down the wall. If you prefer not to cut any holes in your wall or you're not able to do so, then you can buy some plastic cable covers and paint them the same color as your wall. It'll help it blend in a little bit more. I really do like the entire design of this product. I think Ikea did a fantastic job with designing it. No complaints from me on this. All right, now for the setup process. So the Ikea Symphonics picture frame is just like all other Sonos products when it comes to setup. This is typically a very simple and easy to do process. Plug in the speaker, open the app, tap add product. It should then automatically detect your new product, then just follow the on-screen instructions. Pretty simple, right? But I don't know what the heck was going on with my system when setting these things up. The first one would go through the entire setup process, then at the very end would never show up in my system. I reset it back to factory settings probably five or six times and never got it to connect properly over Wi-Fi. So then I said screw it and went on to the second one. This one connected perfectly fine with no issues at all. 
but I wanted to test these as a stereo pair and as surrounds. So I reset the first one again, but connected it to my router with an ethernet cable this time. Connected on the first try and worked perfectly after that. Then when setting them up as a stereo pair, I ran into an issue and had to reset the second one back to factory defaults. Then it started to experience the same issues as the first one. So I connected it to my network with an ethernet cable and it showed up in the app exactly as it should. I do wanna add that once they were connected to my network, I simply disconnected the ethernet cable and they continued to work properly after that. But definitely not a fun experience or fun first experience for me anyways. I'm hoping that whatever bug this was, was fixed with the firmware update that installed when finalizing the setup. Definitely the most frustrating experience I've ever had setting up a Sonos product, but my rant's over now. So just like other Sonos speakers, you can play music and audio to only this speaker, you can do a stereo pair with another Symphonics picture frame, or you can use two of these as surrounds with a Sonos soundbar or a Sonos amp. Of course, all this has to be done inside the Sonos app. There's no remote control or anything like that. You can use AirPlay, Spotify Connect, or connect whatever streaming service you use to your Sonos app to play music on the speaker. Like almost all other Sonos speakers, this product doesn't support Bluetooth at all. So for you Android users out there, you'll have to play music via Spotify Connect or connect the music streaming service you use to your Sonos app. Also, interestingly enough, it does support TruePlay, which is Sonos's audio calibration software. I've talked a lot about this feature in the past and it can make a pretty noticeable difference depending on your room layout. But just to note, TruePlay is only supported on Apple iOS and some iPad OS devices. No Android compatibility whatsoever. Okay, now on to audio quality. So I did a lot of different tests with the Symphonics picture frame, mostly comparing it against the Sonos One SL because that's its most direct competitor. I even had my fiance, Ashley, help me with some of the testing because they sounded so similar. Anyways, the Symphonics picture frame is the exact same price as the Sonos One speaker, except that it doesn't have microphones built in for Alexa or the Google Assistant. The Sonos One SL is the same exact features as a picture frame, except it's $20 cheaper. So just keep these prices in mind when hearing my thoughts on audio quality. So first up, testing a single Symphonics picture frame leaning against a wall versus the Sonos One SL. Off the bat, the first thing I noticed was the bass or the low end response. The picture frame has a lot more punch on the low end. Now it's not nearly as punchy as a dedicated subwoofer like the Sonos Sub, but I'll say that it was fairly surprising. It beats the Sonos One SL by far on the low end. Now for the mid-range and higher frequencies, the Sonos One SL wins by just a hair, like just barely. It's slightly more clear and accurate than the picture frame. However, that's not to say the picture frame is bad by any means. I've been a big fan of the One SL for a very long time now. They've always been impressive for their size. What I did notice though is that at higher volume levels, the picture frame does sound better while the One SL gets slightly louder. The picture frame's more clear, the low end is much more evident, and very little distortion, and overall has a better audio profile at higher volume levels. I tried out various types of music from soft background music to electronic dance music, all of which was just very enjoyable to listen to. I enjoyed more upbeat, bass-heavy music on the picture frame and lighter background music on the One SL, which seems kind of opposite, to be honest. When you look at these speakers, you'd think it would be the other way around, but hey, these are just my opinions. Everyone is going to interpret audio differently, so keep that in mind. So next, I tested two stereo paired Symphonics picture frames and two stereo paired Sonos One SLs. Again, I have the picture frame sitting on my desk leaning up against a wall and the 1SLs were placed at the edges of the same desk. The same things I mentioned regarding a single picture frame still apply here. The major difference I noticed was the distance and width of the audio projected by the picture frames. It was a fair amount wider than the 1SLs. I feel that a stereo pair of picture frames will fill a larger space better than a stereo pair of 1SLs. At least that's what I noticed. Now might be a good time to add in Ashley's opinions. Now keep in mind, she'll likely have a closer opinion to what an average consumer may have, while my opinion is based on quite a few years of detailed audio comparisons. So just keep that in mind, please. I did a blind listening test with her. I made her close her eyes and didn't tell her which speakers were actually playing audio. This isn't a word for word quote of what she said, but here's the gist of it. For louder and more party-centric music, she preferred the 1SLs, but for general listening, she preferred the picture frames. 
She said that the picture frames audio was more clean and clear sounding overall. But the 1SLs did get a bit louder but weren't as clear as the picture frame at higher volume levels. I can see exactly where she's coming from this and it makes total sense to me. And lastly, my opinions on using the Symphonic picture frames as surround speakers. The picture frames were paired as surrounds to a Sonos Beam and I wasn't using a Sonos Sub. So this was slightly more difficult to do because there's not exactly an easy way to use these as surround speakers in every single room. I actually ended up putting them off to the sides for a lot of my testing rather than directly behind me because it makes more sense for this room layout. Regardless though, they still performed very well when used as surrounds. I basically played through the majority of Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales on PS5 and enjoyed every second of the audio experience. The picture frames are so clear and immersive, it's really easy to forget that you know they're even there. I also did my normal testing routine with various movies from Netflix and my Plex media server. The low end that they provide is a fair amount better than using 1SLs, still not a ton, but I think it will surprise most people. The 3D accuracy is pretty darn impressive as well. Listening to some Dolby Atmos test tracks, the picture frames accurately play where the audio is on screen. Of course, there's no overhead sound effects or anything like that, but the placement, it's on point. Overall, the best way I can describe them is that they're very accurate, immersive, and do a great job of enhancing the home audio experience just slightly difficult to place. So overall, I really like this product. It performed very well in the different audio tests that I performed, and it has a uniquely stylish look. The only main issue I see with it is being able to place them in a room without it looking out of place. Everyone is going to have a different shaped room with windows, door frames, and other things like that. So placing one or even two of these in a room properly may prove to be a little difficult. And if you're using them as surrounds, you may run into the issue of height placement. Even if you have you know, a blank wall behind your main seating area with plenty of room to work with, you're fighting two different factors here. Placing them at the same height as other picture frames or paintings on your wall, but doing so is gonna place them at a less than ideal height for the best audio experience. If you mount them close to ear level where you typically want surround speakers to be, they're gonna look very out of place. So just kind of keep this in mind if you choose to purchase them. Also, it's good to know that the speakers will likely vibrate the wall that it's mounted on. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that you don't place them on a shared wall. Your neighbors are not gonna like that. Other than these things, I really like this product. I think Sonos and Ikea did a great job collaborating to create a pretty unique product that I know a lot of people are going to like. Now I guess the big question is, should you go with the Symphonics picture frame or the Sonos One or One SL? Honestly, I think it comes down to looks and the room layout. If you think you can use or mount the Symphonic picture frame and not have it look out of place, then I would go for it over the Sonos One SL. But if placing the product seems like it's gonna be difficult for your room, then just go with the One SL. Honestly, I think it's just personal preference at this point. They sound so similar that I really think it comes down to aesthetics and looks. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.